Hey, you guys are gonna like this. I just punched a 17 millimeter hole in eight millimeter thick Sandvik steel with an Allen key and a homemade 100 ton press. Cost me 35 bucks, built it on a Saturday. Stick around, I'll show you how. We'll jump right into the meat of this. You can knock this together in a Saturday part of Sunday morning for the, letting the paint dry. And you get a hell of a lot of force by just using big old screws. Now these are one inch national course, eight threads per inch. And these are L7, so they're almost grade eight. Well, a lot better grade than the cheese that you get at the Home Depot. And then this is just one inch plate, through drilled, one inch, and drilled seven eighths and tapped so that when you turn the screw, it clamps together. The coupling nuts, no big deal, welded on the inside. And we bored a hole in there so we can do some pressing other than die pressing or do some broaching or whatever you want. And then we, we got fancy because I got a Bridgeport milling machine here, so I milled a little pocket in there for a neodymium magnet to, to uh, hold the tool holder. And then I also did a ring of neodymium magnets on the bottom to hold the bottom plate. Uh, unfortunately, well, it's good and bad. It's on there so friggin' good that you can you need a pry bar to get it off, but at the same time, now you can stick it in your vise and it gets supported while you close it so you're not to get somebody else to hold your hernia while you close your vise up. Well, I'll give you the broad strokes, so now let's get into the nitty gritty. Uh, we start with a piece of one inch by six inch mild steel flat bar that we're gonna cut with the Milwaukee death metal cutting saw. Headphone users, it was about to get real loud. What? Ah! Right, removed about 80 feet of freight extension cord. Let's try this again, shall we? We got our two one inch mild steel plates in the vise here. We got them ganged up. We're gonna gang drill them using this stuff that grows on trees, wood, WUD. It's good because it, it's, it's got a little give so it allows you to gang drill, otherwise uh, you wouldn't be able to do this. And I got my special drill bit. It's unobtainium centered pixie dust so we're gonna amp up the speed a little bit. I get the top and bottom plates pilot drilled, a center marked here for a magnet that I'm going to epoxy in there. This is the top plate, so I'm going to through drill these to one inch, and the bottom plate I'm going to uh, drill and tap to a one inch national course. I got the annular cutter in there, one inch, and because the annular cutter only cuts, it cuts out a slug. It's not as hard on the old Bridgeport as uh, as a twist drill. Now. Uh, well, the Bridgeport run a one inch twist drill? Yeah, no problem. Is it recommended? Um, probably not. So here are the steel slugs. And I keep these. I think I used one in 86, so you never know. Okay, so we got the top plate all drilled with the annular cutter and you can see real nice holes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take the three quarter end mill and mill out a little pocket for the neodymium magnet there on the top plate. Okay, top plate's done. Yeah, nice and snug there, perfect, like a glove. Unfortunately, I don't have a 7 8 annular cutter, but what I do have is a brand new Klee line twist drill. So we're gonna punch this band, band of jamming through, bust this cherry, and to give us a fighting chance before that, I uh, punch through a 9 sixteenths. Little Astro Glide on there. Okay, this is not going to work, but we're going to try it anyway. One inch, eight, national course, tap, and rigid tapping in the bridge board. Uh, 
Uh, I don't know, man. I slip it in the collar too, and that collar's tight, tight as hell. No, okay, so rather than beating the hell out of the bridge board here, uh, I'm gonna, gonna give the old girl a break and do it by hand. Yay, hand tapping, one inch threads. At least it's eight threads per inch. I only gotta go around eight times to get through this thing. Holy. I got it all threaded there now. Once I got it started, I was sure it wasn't gonna go all daddy wampus on me. I grabbed the 12 point and uh, the four foot snap on ratchet. Uh, that seemed to go quite a bit better. So nothing but a little nasty bulwark. No big deal. Just gonna chamfer these holes. I'm thinking it might be a good idea to lock down the table while I do this. We're going to use another annular cutter to punch a two inch hole in the bottom plate. My drive tripped out. It'll do 200% over torque for 90 seconds, but uh, and that is a beautiful two inch hole. Compliments of the annular cutter and the old worn out bridge board. All right, so we got our bottom plate marked off here on the workbench. Uh, we center punched eight holes. We're gonna drill them to a quarter inch and then put it in the mill and mill them so they're flat bottom to quarter inch. And then we're gonna epoxy in some magnets so that our spreader bars or whatever our support, um, say we're doing some uh, broaching or whatever, uh, the magnets will hold our supports in place. So, but uh, it's also a good excuse because I got myself a new toy, and we're going to uh, just start to drill this out quarter inch before we put it in the mill and mill it. And a previous episode there, I took one apart and I didn't like the looks of it, so I just went with the brush motor. Well, so far, that's not a bad little drill. Got the quarter inch four fluter in there. All positioned. And we're going to punch down a quarter inch. Go. So we're getting some disconcerting clicks and clacks here out of this end mill. Uh, it clearly doesn't like plunging, so we're going to go back to the drawing board, a quarter inch drill bit. Okay, so this is the last of the whole quarter inch holes. We drilled at 0.16. Now we're going to go ahead and end mill them. Yeah, so that's a lot nicer on our little $4 end mill. I normally use this Defcon 5, a two part five minute epoxy, but it's cold in here. I'm going to give this uh, isocyanate uh, glue a try, see how that fares. And of course, I cleaned out the holes with my favorite libation. Pretty clean. Ah, <laughs> they're in there pretty. They're, they're strong little magnets. That's there's no doubt about that. Hard getting them apart. Now while we wait for that to chooch, we can do our welding. I intended to weld this up, but before I put the magnets in, but I plumb forgot. So we're gonna weld it up after I put the magnets in. I don't think there should be too much heat sinking across here to really affect the magnet too too bad. If it does, oh well. So this is the one inch ready rod we're using. I went to the Home Depot to price out that uh, great uh, hard cheese that they sell, those ready rods. And for less money I went to Fastenal and bought these for 15 bucks a piece and these are L7. They're essentially grade eight uh, bolts, same, pretty close to the same KSI. So uh, 120,000 pounds per square inch uh, rated tensile, so it's strong. But uh, consequently, because they're strong, they're a bear to cut, so just take the zip cut, take your time. Ah, son of a bitch! And for God's sakes, don't shoot the sparks at your dingus. Now all we gotta do is clean the cut end up. We gotta just take that over to the bench grinder and give her a little cham for your... Well, let's have a look to see how the magnets are doing. I put this piece of cardboard over here to... Uh, 
protect it from sparks and uh, here's a new slosh for you super glue sticks friggin dingus yeah, seems to be working okay oh oh fuck I'm gonna <sighs> glue all over me glue my eyelid shut yay right so I got the LC bin rod in here into this coupling nut and I'm cheating I only half filled the coupling nut because I only got 18 inches of this rod I'm gonna use a stick welder now this is high carbon a good choice would be a stainless steel rod but uh, I don't have that so instead I'm using 7018 uh, 125 amps and the stick uh, better than make or anything will reach right in there and uh, jam it in you're going to want to put your shield down so you don't catch uh, the arc flash. You want you to get a sunburn on your eyeballs from lots of leeches. Okay, shield's down if you don't want to catch arc flash. Nothing like the sound of bacon frying in the morning. Well, we got the welder going. I'm just going to fix this little apprentice mark here. And I want to protect my magnets. And the way to do that is with cardboard and duct tape. Now don't look into the pretty blue light. Well, I might not be a journeyman welder, but I'm a hell of a man on the grinder. Now look at that. The master of illusion. You wouldn't even know that that's cracked straight through. Now for the guys in the used machinery business, we've completed the most critical part, the paint. So now that the paint's kind of sort of dry, we can go ahead and apply some decals. And a good way to do that is uh, just use some soapy water and you spray it before you put the decal on and then you'll be able to uh, position it. It won't stick right away, you'll position it and then when the soapy water dries, it'll stick like normal. I'm getting excited, we're getting close here. This is cute, see the magnets I put in there? <laughs> yeah, paint's, paint's still a little wet, but no big deal. So I'm chasing the chowder out of the threads here with the one inch bottoming tap, which is the only tap I had, but I still managed to uh, thread the holes. And then we're gonna go ahead and lubricate the threaded rod. Now I would like to use open gear grease, high, high pressure uh, black molly, but uh, Ever since the white couch debacle of OT3, haven't been allowed to have it in the house. It's actually contraband. I'll get in trouble if it's in here. So instead, we're going to use copper uh, Never Seize. Smear Libeli with Never Seize. Bigger gob, the better the jab. Now, you ever wonder why the brush never reaches the bottom? Well, it's because they want you to buy more of the stuff, the dirty bastards. I found the workaround. Ha. Not so smart now, are you, Loctite? So we got all four rods threaded in. Uh, this one's a little tight. We're about to blonde one off. I think the paint's a little thick or something. But we're going to go ahead and embiggen this hole. Well, the clicks and pops are getting a little more frequent, so I think we're getting close. <laughs> she actually is pretty tight. I think we're through there now. Yeah. Yeah, no clicks, no bangs, just uh, you can tell it gets to the plastic uh, yield and it gets way easier. There we go, easy as that. There's a slug. There's a nice hex hole. Oh man, that's awesome. Man, the proof is in the pudding. A little screwy works like a hot damn. That's eight millimeter. Fancy European steel straight from San Vic in Sweden and punch through a 17 millimeter hex like a hot damn. It's a bit of work, mind you, but uh, considering I paid $36 for the threaded rods and everything else was scrap, I'm pretty happy with that.